Hello everybody and welcome back to Barcelona. Now, third season. This is a big one. We have to win the Champions League. We have to win the Champions League. Now, let's see who we bought in the summer transfer window. Our first signing is Milan Skriniar. Now, he comes in to be our, I guess, PK more, like slightly taller, slightly bigger frame and that sort of stuff. Whereas, I guess, Eric Garcia's our, our Puyol, maybe something like that. That's how we're going to have to look at it. But that's, so, he comes in, he replaces Larquois, who you're going to see was sold in a second. So, yeah, it's not really a addition to the squad, more like a sideways a sideways move in terms of numbers, but a step forward, I think, in terms of having a proper centre-back in there who's not as quick, but should be better. Joe Poro comes in to beat our Danny Alves. Now, I think he's an excellent right-back. He was the only right-back in the world that had pace, looked a bit like what Danny Alves would look like in 2009, and wasn't going to cost us £200 million. So, there you go. Declan Rice comes in to beat our Busquets. Yes, Decky Rice comes in, <laughs> and he's going to be our Sergio Busquets. Pretty good, I think, in terms of his overall uh, ability. He's a slightly, he's slightly slow, not quite agile enough, but Busquets was never fast either, was he? So there we go. Kame is going to be our, I guess, Silvino. We want to go for the 2008-9 team specifically. Just a young one. Yeah, I guess. Here is our Thierry Henry, Kylian Mbappe. He cost us a bit of money. Not as much as you'd think. He cost us, how much did he cost us? 70 million. So not, not as much as you think. He was actually right. And yeah, he comes in for 70 million. He is a lot more like Thierry Henry. To be fair, he's more like a right-footed Messi, isn't he? If we're being perfectly honest. But we aren't going to fit the tactic to suit him being right-footed on the left side. We're just going to call him Thierry Henry and just keep it going. I think he put up a tweet, didn't he, the other day of him and Henry. Like he's, I guess he loves Thierry Henry and wants to emulate him a little bit. So there you go, Killian. You're going to rediscover those glory days at Barcelona for him. Now, Latore Martinez actually looks a lot like David Villa, I think, would have done in but manager around that sort of side rather than Samuel Eto'o. In fact, he probably looks like Samuel Eto'o now I think about this more, more deeply. So yeah, Samuel Eto'o, there you go. We've got a better one in, basically. Alexander Isaac will stay and, stay and be the backup for us, but that's how I knew Samuel Eto'o, and he's a lot better. You see how he comes in really as a, as a squad player? I wanted to bring in Jude Bellingham to be our Yaya Torre because Yaya Torre was a player that could play as a pivot or could go and play as one of the advanced midfielders and play potentially even centre-back. And Bellingham had the same sort of stats where he could do all those things. Um, unfortunately, originally they quoted us 65 for Bellingham, then it became 91 all up front, and Arsenal like to this really close, so we couldn't really match that. So Musiala has to be the player we bring in instead. Now, he just isn't really as good defensively as Ayatori was, on foot manager anyway. Um, so, yeah, I guess he's like a combination of being Keita and Yaya. So, bonus signing. And that is actually going to do us. So, that is pretty much a net spend of 200 million. So that's not actually that big for transfers out because we've brought in almost half the money that we spent, so it's not too bad at all. Notable out, so Mukoko for 34 million. We sold a few players here. Now, well, not all of this is up front, obviously. Now, some of these signings are actually massively inflated because, like, I think at least on three of these, the extra, like, bonus they get just probably won't happen for, for a couple of seasons at least. It's like 50 international appearances, something like that. So it's going to take a few years for those to kick in. So it's not actually as bad. Really, you're just looking at this initial figure. If you took, like, all those off, you're taking a bit of money off each. So we're actually probably, our net spend's probably down and below 200 million, I would say. Most of these signings are up front or they're just in installments. There's no, like, after somebody wins a trophy, that sort of thing. The only transfer, I'll tell you why we had to sign Musiala. That one wouldn't have happened. So if you count out Musiala, we actually signed one, two, three, four, five, six. So it became seven signings and it should have been six. Now, the reason we signed Musiala was Newcastle activated and Dombele's 40 million release clause. And I basically thought, if we're going to lose and Dombele... I'd almost rather take some of it over in instalments because of the monthly finances. I'd want to start losing money, to be honest, if we can avoid doing that. So I decided to offer him out while they activate his release clause. I think he'd have signed for them anyway. And Inter Milan offered us 39 million with 30 feet up front, 9 million over some months and stuff like that. So I just thought it'd be good to eat back at the transfer deficit we created. And you're bang up to date. That is the, that is the transfers. And that's going to be the first team for this season, as you can see it. So, uh, Gaia kicked up a fuss about a new contract. I refused. He then got unhappy and his stats plummeted. So now he's happy again. I gave it to him eventually. Let's hope that that goes back up. Otherwise, that's a weak position for us. So, yeah, this season, De Jong's going to be our chubby. No messing around. Pedri's our Iniesta. Declan Rice will be our Busquets. I think going into the end of the season, I might change all the names. But for now, we'll keep it as it is. So that's going to be the first team as you can see it. Now, how many homegrown players do we have? One, two, three, four... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. So ten of our squad are club uh, homegrown through La Masia. So that's going to be interesting. Pedro Porro, 
wasn't actually won, but he's uh, Spanish, so. And then you also have um, that's another one as well. But yeah, that's going to be our team for this season. The potential warning signs and problem areas could be maybe central midfield. I'm not entirely sure. Musiala is now a good backup to have with with Gavi. I mean, I just think we we are pretty much set though. We should be good all, all round and. Uh, if we don't win the Champions League this season, then it's definitely disappointment now. So there we go. Not entirely sure that Bellerin is a good enough backup right back, for being honest. But and he, so we have to be creative here. First choice is out. Bellerin is out, and so is our third choice. So Eric Garcia has to go out there. Then that's not the most ideal start. We'll do that. So that is the team for today's game. Then let's see how we get on against Granada. Assistant manager says. My favourites for a reason, yep. I'll see it's another place in Erling Haaland. He's going to dribble across back straight into it. Our Iniesta, who should have scored. That should be two already for us. Definitely one. Free kick here. De Jong's play it short to Gaia. Plays it back. It's a bit of a one-two. Gavardio. It's across. Lautaro Martinez scores. Makes it one of the Barcelona. Come on, boys. See, I did decide that we're just going to continue with the 2009 tactic for the third season until we win the Champions League. And then after that, we could change to Pep's 10-11 uh, uh, season and carry on with the save, potentially, but just changing the tactic to that team. I did like it was really fair to change tactics when this hasn't really got the success that I intended for it yet. So we'll see. We could still tweak it a little bit this season as well because I'm not liking some of those early pings and switches. Like the, the width we could take down maybe another attacking mentality. So they don't do those like what Guy and Mbappe might do here. Well, that's not too bad. That's just a... Oh, wow, there you go. Pick that one out. I don't mind the odd ball in behind to like a Samuel 2 run, which is what would have happened. But as long as it's not all the time. So like there, I don't mind it. If it's every now and again. Like, if every time Mbappe gets it, he pings it, I'm not going to be happy, but... I mean, pick that one out. If we score early, we could destroy teams, I think. We really could absolutely destroy teams, because there's already now two. This is a, could be number three. It's a highlight straight away. Oh, it's terrible for Martinez there. Deki Rice getting involved. Eric Garcia. Oh, should have been a goal. Just over 60% possession early on here against Granada. I think two special, 62 now. Corner, Gaia whips it in, it's headed away, Eric Garcia is now going to come short and play it to Deki Rice, De Jong, Eric Garcia whips it in, Latoro Martinez, 3-0 Barso. I'll let immediately after here, incidentally, and Granada are going to just pass to it, give us the ball, just give us the ball, we're going to win it back off you, just give it to us now, make it four, come on boys, here we go, here we go, force, it, force them to play it long, yep, fine, now we get, now we rebuild, Gavardio, Liver coach, don't you dare clear that, good, Gaia, Gavardio, Deki Rice, Mbappe dribbles past the player. Thierry Henry looks for Iniesta. Iniesta gone wide, plays it back to Eric Vidal. Could get that out. Busquets, PK. Oh, just. God, oh, just. I ran out of names. They're just too good. What a goal is correct, Mr. Commentator. And there we go. 4 0 Barca, Deccan Rice. And so this was just brilliant, wasn't it? Just the overload of the positions. I mean, I'm not entirely sure I like that bit where he clips it into Lotaro's head. Like, I don't know why he has to play that. But I think that's more of him making a poor decision on the pass rather than it be the way the tactic is set up. So maybe with a tweak. I think width, maybe. I'm not entirely sure what else, but like, there was no need to play that one in the air. It's 5 0 already. Yeah, I don't think we're going to watch too many regular season matches, normal matches in the La Liga this year because it's just going to be like this, I think. This tactic is very good now. This tactic should work with most teams that have got a half-decent team. And Mbappe is going to just score loads of goals this season. So let, let's start this now then. Can we stop these, like, longer passes? Do we go... Well, the full-back support doesn't have any settings on them at all. I thought I'd put settings on the left-back, to be honest. So I want you to definitely not force it. Can I say take fewer risks and maybe cut inside with the ball? And see how that goes. It was cleared early on in the second half here. Guy's going to get it and play it into Mbappe. Mbappe to Gaia, to Rice, to Cavario. Nice, we're staying on it slightly better there. I think maybe Guy might have forced that before we made the change. I'll oh, pick that one out. Yeah, I love that. I mean, if they're going to let our Iniesta just glide through the middle, then we're just going to pick him out, aren't we, Chavi? Chavi says, yep. Frankie Dong's an excellent player. I really wish I'd used him more. I just, I just thought using Gabby was, was going to be good long term. I mean, that's just excellent. I like for Barca, Guy gets it. He's a bit narrow at the moment. Pedri and Mbappe back into Guy. There we go, slightly better. Gavardio, Deki Rice, Grignar, Rocky De Jong, nice. Can we get the ball through to Mbappe? Uh, to Pedri is what I was trying to say. Yeah, good. We've got it to him. Pedri goes through. 
went wide, which wasn't a really good decision, but he has forced a penalty. He was going to be 7 0 to Barca after 55 minutes, uh, 51 minutes. Mbappe scores 7 0 Barcelona. I want us to get 10. Let's get 10, lads. Lucky Don can come off and let's put on Gabby in the middle. And I think Musiala could probably come on as well. Let's put him on for Pedri so we could double change him the field there. As there's a highlight here, and they have the ball to Granada. They might get a goal. They, uh, they do seem to create the odd good chance against us. Last couple of seasons, I've noticed they're pretty good against us for creating chances. I don't know what formation they're playing it. But they get a chance, and it's wide. I like hear Gabby to Gaia. Gaia stays on it and gives it back to Gabby. Whipped in the far post. Erling Haaland should have been a goal. Eric Garcia continues with it. Eric, Erling Haaland's, and it's uh, saved. 7 0 to Barcelona. What the lads coming for us? That was a battering. Now, now, already looking at next episode, I think that if there's going to be tweaks to the tactic for you to see, they're going to happen early on. So I think we'll come back for some games early on just to see the tweaks to the tactic, and then we'll probably just skip through like it's a regular sort of series. So I'm thinking next episode we could just do Villa around Sevilla because that's two tougher teams that we've got in the league. Sevilla obviously finished second last season. We could then probably skip the Levante game and then do Espanyol Real Madrid maybe, or even skip that game as well, do Real Madrid and Real Sociedad. We'll do that double away games against two decent sides in the league. And after that, probably be quite a few skips into the uh, into the season. So that's what we'll do. We'll keep these episodes close together at the start, but we're still tweaking. Like, I mean, they're a fullback position. I think at the very least, we'll do take fewer risks for now and see how that goes for the next little bit. But apart from that, it's going to stay exactly as it is. That was a really good performance, not just in terms of possession, the way that we played, the patterns, movements, everything about that was really, really good. It was a good first game to the season, of the season to have. Our Etu scored three, our Omri scored three, and our Messi scored zero. So there you go. But that is going to do the episode. I hope you enjoyed the episode, and I hope you enjoyed the uh, chances we made and agree that some of them are a big step forward. I think they are. And I think the squad's pretty much set going into future years now. Finances are still looking good at the club. For those of you that are interested in what we're doing, we're still 200 million in the positive. We have got, I think, not that much going out in transfers anyway, so we're doing pretty good. Things are looking very good for the football club, and that's just a case of can we get this going against the good sides in English football, like Chelsea beat us last year, nil-nil over... 180 minutes plus extra time and, and then penalties they managed to beat us um, without a scoring a single goal so it's going to be interesting to see if we can compete with them this year and still carry on and progress and play our football and win the Champions League but we'll find out we'll find out together and we'll find out pretty soon so thank you very much for watching see you next time